Good morning, fellow hobby machinists. It's Olin Nemac coming to you from my shop in Southern New Hampshire. Today I will be sharing with you my thoughts and experiences on my new LMS 5550 bench mill. I recently bought my first milling machine from Little Machine Shop and I'm going to be posting videos about the things I run across as I get the mill up and running. Today I'll be talking about tensioning the spindle motor belt and checking the electric connections in the back of the column. Let's get going. Right here up on top is the cover to the motor belt that goes between the motor and the spindle. And to take that apart, well, first I suggest you take off this piece because it's really heavy. And the box that covers the belt is made out of cast iron, so it's also heavy. Now you need a three millimeter Allen head, and these are quite deep screws, but four, four screws, and then this lifts off. And what you have on top is simply a pulley run into a, with a, by a belt to the motor in the back. It's a simple arrangement. Uh, you loosen four screws. The motor is plate is on, is slotted. So you loosen those screws and those are a four millimeter. And then you take something like a screwdriver and you snug it up. You don't want this thing real tight, but when I found it, it was quite loose. So I got it so that it's a little bit of deflection when you press on it. You don't want it too tight because that'll damage the, the bearings, uh, but snug it up. This is a new belt, so I expect I'll be coming back uh, in a month or two to check it because these belts do stretch. It is a tooth belt, so they don't stretch too bad, but it's one of those things I'd recommend you take a look at. Uh, when you first get it and then you know put it on your calendar to go back at some point and give it another check um, after that they, they they stay pretty good so there you have it that's that's an easy one but certainly something worth uh, checking out as you get started one last thing about putting the uh, cover back on which I uh, went to do is one of the holes, the threads are buggered up. Um, pretty common with these machines that as I take stuff apart, I usually have to chase the threads to get things uh, back together and, and just working right. So uh, keep that in mind as you go through your machine uh, for the first time taking things apart that you better have a set of metric taps uh, to chase the threads. Well, one more addendum to this cover that goes over the uh, motor drive belt was that the uh, all four holes didn't line up when I went to put the cover back on. Uh, there's just enough misalignment that I could only get three bolts in. So what I'm going to do is I uh, am going to open up the, the holes eh, about 15 thousandths in diameter to see if that doesn't uh, allow me to line things up like they should be. But this is pretty common. What I've found with this Chinese mill is uh, things aren't tapped as good as they could be and the holes are just not quite aligned well. And, and oftentimes you can just loosen things up to get it aligned. But other times that I've found, I have to go in with a drill uh, and, and just open it up. 10 or 15 thousandths so things assemble like it should so just another little bit uh, to get this cover but good thing is once I do it won't have to do it again now we're around to the back side of the mill and I've taken the electrical covers off the back of the column there's two of them a little one on top and then a larger one that covers the lower section. I'll tell you that you have to take those covers off to get the screws that take the entire electrical cover off 
the back of the uh, mill if you ever want to get to the uh, lift mechanism in the uh, back of the column. And in fact, that's what I was doing. And while I was there, as has been my practice for a long time, as I checked out the electrical connections to see if they were tight. And there's a bunch of little terminal strips in here. And my experience is, is when you got a loose connection, that can cause havoc uh, sometimes because you get intermittent connections and it, it just plays heck with trying to troubleshoot them because it's not consistent. So I just went in with a little screwdriver and checked the little terminal screws uh, just to make sure everything was tight, made sure the connectors are on good. Unfortunately, uh, three or four of those screws were flat loose. They uh, didn't seem like they'd ever been tightened, so that was a problem waiting to happen. So I went through and snugged everything up. There was a few more that were kind of tight, and you know, you don't want to put the Gorilla Torque on these things. You just want them snug so that there's good electrical contact. And I went on through the, through the entire en enclosure, got to the bottom, and another problem that I found um, hard to see in the photo, but right down at the bottom is uh, a grounding strip with several ground wires. And I found the same thing. A number of the uh, grounds, the, sc the terminal screws were not tight. And if anything will play heck uh, with electronics, it's poor grounding. So I went through and snugged those all up as well. And you know, this will just prevent problems in the future. Now, one other thing while I was back here is my mill was the deluxe model, which came with uh, a Bluetooth DRO with this slick little uh, bracket to hold the, uh, the tablet. It even has an electrical wire uh, for charging. So they did a good job, but... Uh, I was just checking the bracket and the mounting screws were loose and those have uh, screws with nuts on the inside so it's not like you could even tighten them from the outside you got to get in there with a wrench on on one side and then uh, you know a screwdriver on the other and tighten those up so yeah just a, a general rule of thumb that I've always followed is when I go through things I just check screws and, and bolts and stuff to, to make sure they're, they're tight because uh, apparently it's pretty common uh, that you got some people that are on the ball at the factory and some people that I don't know what's going on so you know I got a good machine I, I can't complain really uh, there's no way I could have afforded uh, a better more expensive mill uh, so uh, like one other YouTube machinist said, you know, these Chinese machines are a project, uh, but they do allow people to get something reasonably decent. Uh, you just got to consider it a project, and that's okay. Uh, one last thing, and I'll just zoom in it real quick. Uh, if you don't already have these little magnetic parts trays, get some. Uh, I think I got four of them for 10 bucks on Amazon. Um, you know, this thing's got a bunch of little screws and as I get older, my fingers just have, don't have the dexterity they once had. So to avoid dropping things, I picked up a couple of those. I got them spread through the shop and they're pretty handy. Well, that's it for now. I hope, uh, you found something useful here. Uh, happy machining. See you next time.